This is Christian Kirk with the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you Wednesday, October 28th. What up? With standing victories. Mm. As we do. <laughs> As we do. Welcome into the show. It's going to be a fun one. We've got a midseason review on the show today. Some reflection, some prediction, some uh, discussion. <laughs> oh, so... So eloquent. Yes. Uh, we've got we've got a lot to talk about. We also will preview the Thursday night football game, talk about some news, and yeah. Talk about the weather. The weather is oh, changing. The weather, the weather is crazy, man. I hope people are staying safe. There was like an ice storm going on in the in middle America. My my in laws were over there. They ended up getting in a wreck. They're safe. Uh they but, got in a wreck. They're safe. I'm saying, I'm, well, I'm just saying, like, I don't, I'm not announcing that my in-laws are in in uh, dire straits. Yes, but I was tracking with because, you. gotcha, because the roads are icy. It, are there like, mammoths out there? Woolly mammoths are back. Yeah, uh, saber-toothed tigers. Right. 2020. Uh, giant sloths. All the creatures from Ice Age. Were See, the, the giant sloths were part of the Ice Age? The movie. I don't know. If oh, they, okay. I don't think they actually. Well, that were. is a documentary. Well, here's yeah. what's happening in Arizona. Arizona, it's getting a little darker and a little cooler, which means we can't wake up. Yes. <laughs> Do you guys have this problem? Where as the whole soon world as, has this problem because the whole world deals with like seasonal depression and the, but, the the light and the sun. We are the ones that kind of are used to daylight all the time. I was thinking. And hear me out. <laughs> okay. Why are no choice. smelling salts? more like we should have Ooh. it at the studio here i watch these football players yeah. and they're gonna take a big kick and they pull out a smelling salt and give it a whiff and they're like let's go i'm ready i we should start our show with smelling salt i feel like I, just in the office like a week ago i was talking about smelling salts i've never been exposed to a smelling salt i have no idea what happens but other than i've seen an NFL right. player's face after they take a whiff <laughs> yeah. of that stuff. And that's much different than bath salts, right? I hope oh, so. Oh, yeah. You you okay. turn into a zombie and you do bad things with okay. bath salts. Okay, just making sure. But, no, you're right. They're not common enough in other industries, right. Jason. Very good point. Uh, Brooks, uh, Jeremy, you know, please get on this. I, I would see like some school, school teachers use them a lot They right before the class. A big business meeting? I mean, yeah. What what are we doing wrong? Jason, you're on to something. All right. Let's get hyped. This is because Mike said moments before we started the show, I could go for a nap right oh, now. Oh, man. It's 8.40 in the morning. Yeah, perfect <laughs> nap time. <laughs> so we don't adjust well in Arizona. That's what we learned. Uh, we've got a Halloween show coming up on Friday. You do not want to miss that. I also want to invite you to uh, take a visit on the World Wide Web over to jointhefoot.com <laughs> and check out the community uh, of uh, almost, I think it's 18,000 Foot Clan supporters you get a boat bonus weekly episode you get premium perks you get a resources boat. you get a boat we send you a boat we do giveaways uh, you maybe pay one shipping. of these times it'll be a boat maybe yeah. what is shipping on a boat i mean if you have to actually oh i mean you gotta go freight you gotta crate that thing up yeah wait it's, you're gonna ship the boat by land that's yes. correct yeah right. thank we're, you al we're not for gonna jumping. ride the boat al rarely jumps in on the show but it's a if it's a freight problem <laughs> He's We've got Al Borland. Look, we're going to drive this thing out there. We probably won't ever make it. <laughs> it's just us sitting in a boat where uh, I will take my nap. You may or may not get a boat, nap but check boat. it out at jointhefoot.com. Become a part of the community. Get access to a ton of cool perks. Uh, we'll be recording our bonus episode later this afternoon, so you don't want to miss it. Let's do some buy-sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Let's My, focus on what happened last week. Oh, mm. you two decided to align all of your opinions to celebrate Best Friends Week, mm -hmm. and uh, you guys were perfect. 
You sold Devin. We all sold Devin Singletary. Oh, it, easiest sell of my life as a top twenty running back. Can we can we stat him or put him in this part of the show every week? Okay, if Devin Singletary was the easiest sell of our lives against the Jets, Devin Singletary should be on waiver wires based on that. Dev, he, he sh you don't he shouldn't be on the waiver wire because he is a running back that if Zach Moss misses time, Devin Singletary is a good play. Like they're so and vice versa, but and, together yes. they're both bad plays. Exactly. Nice. So he, I guess he could be on the waiver wire, but then if he, then there will be a clamoring, yeah, to get him. He'll be a hot pickup. All right, uh, Big Ben, two hundred fifty passing yards against Tennessee. Oh, this was a close one though. You guys got it. You both bought. He hit two sixty eight against Tennessee. That's right. And then DJ Moore, seventy five receiving yards. You guys both bought it. Um. He hit 93 again because 93 is where he wants to be. DJ 93. Yeah. All right. Week eight edition of buy sell. Let's start here. Josh Allen against New England. Will he be a top 10 quarterback? Oof. Through the first four Oof. weeks of the season, he was the quarterback six or better each and every week. The past three weeks, not so good. Quarterback 15 or worse each and every week. It, I... it, it kind of stinks because for those of us that invested in Josh Allen, you pretty much, after four weeks, you're pot committed. You're going to start him every week. You know what the upside is, and yet you've received some disappointment. It is actually interesting. I'm, uh, you're, you're, you're speaking to me here. In the league of record, Josh Allen is my quarterback. I've gotten off to a hot start. I'm, uh, whatever it is, six and one. Um, I'm not looking to the waiver wire. I have Josh Allen. He's in my lineup. He's who I'm going to start this week, and I'm going to sell at the same time, that he's not going to be a top 10 quarterback. Isn't that yeah. a weird situation? That, that is really weird because I'm sure the guys like Teddy B are chilling out on our waiver wire. I think what it is, it's a matter of longevity. I don't, you know, he's not a stream guy. He's not a guy I'm going to be able to drop to the waivers. So I don't want to take up another roster spot with a second quarterback to maybe be better than Josh Allen because we know Josh Allen's peaks mm -hmm. are 40-point games. But the New England Patriots, if you if you look on the course of the season, they have literally only had a quarterback one a single time. We're going into week eight, and it's only been once, and it was only Russell Wilson, that great week two primetime game. Josh Allen has not been great the last couple of weeks, and I've been making excuses. I'm going to sell here. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I'm going to buy it. I think he'll be at the back eight, nine, ten this week. I don't think it's going to be an explosion type of game, but – He's due for uh, some more passing touchdowns than we've seen over the last three weeks. Some things just have not come together. You know you're going to get the rushing baseline. He may rush in a touchdown, too. I'm going to buy it. I will be selling. All right. Ronald Jones at the New York Football Giants, 75 total yards. Buy or sell. He's topped 100 yards three weeks in a row, or he did top 103 in a row, weeks four through six, without Leonard Fournette. He only had 15 opportunities last week, only ended up with 36 yards. I'm going to sell this. Yeah, this one is a sell. This is what we were talking about of uh, a couple weeks ago, highlighting Ronald Jones when he was on a tear because Leonard Fournette was missing time. Leonard Fournette, or, uh, I'm sorry, Ronald Jones is a good runner. He he's not a complete three down running back. It's a wild world where you you need a pass catching running back, and you're like Leonard Fournette. That's the guy we'll turn to. I know he caught a bunch of passes last year, but it's when it comes to uh, efficiency and and specializing at that, Fournette is just capable. Ronald Jones is not capable of being the passing downs running back, and that turned into Leonard Fournette seeing 78% of the running back targets last week. That turned into Leonard Fournette seeing 56% of the snaps, 46% of the running back attempts. I got a theory on it. All right, let's hear it. This is why Leonard Fournette's a pass catching back now. It's easier to catch the ball when you're running slow. Mm. And he slowed down over the course of his career, and now mm. it's easier. To, I mean, if you're running full speed, Ronald Jones coming out of there like a bat out of hell. I mean, that's true. It's hard to hard to put it, you know, in the right spot if someone's going full speed. Yeah. So that's a great point. Uh, I'm going to sell as well. <laughs> okay, Robert Woods against Miami, a top twenty wide receiver finish. He hasn't done it since mm. week three. Miami uh, has been good. This is really, really – this is a great line, Brooks. Yeah, it is. Because if you look at the last couple of weeks, Robert Woods was – the two of the last three weeks, he was very good. But he didn't crack that top 20. He is a consistent 
you know, very high floor type of player usually, but he's not a touchdown guy, generally speaking, in his career. And when you don't get the touchdowns, and you he's don't, already got three on the year, yeah, that's he's, he's approaching his you know career high. Um, when you don't get the touchdowns, it's hard to be in the top twenty. So I go back and forth on the other side. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but his home road splits, short sample size so far, but he's been much better on the road um, hmm. than he has been at home, averaging 14.1 fantasy points versus eight. The matchup is good, so... So yeah, what are you where doing? you give an answer now. <laughs> I'm going to buy. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to see him as a top 20 wide receiver this week. I'm going to sell it. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm going to sell as well. I mean, the... The DBs in Miami and the defense—it's—it's it's no joke, man. They're—they're. About they're, time they, we broke these best friends up. They—they—they they, they still have the stink of the last few years on them, and this is this is a transforming team right now. I agree. Which was, is why to a better win. That was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code Ballers. Get a ten dollar credit. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. I regret my buy. <laughs> <laughs> that breaking news. Um, I regret buying top it's, twenty. It's too late, man. Your bet is, is it, in. That once the you once got the, the next slip. drop goes. Yep. Dang it! No taxi backseat. We also have our uh, our waivers in our league of record is going through in about twelve minutes. Ooh. And we talked yesterday. Was a tough waiver show. I yes. don't know if we've had a tougher waiver show to kind of. We, we have differences of opinion on a number of players, and that's based on the fact that we don't have a lot of information. I just thought I would let people know, because one of the things that separates this show, I hope, is that, look, we wear our heart on our sleeve, each of us. We have uh, teams and that we really, really care about, and we're one with the Foot Clan in terms of the emotions that come with fantasy football. And we talked about you have to shoot your shot on certain players. So I, I'll let you know where I sh where I'm shooting my shot. All right. In so twelve minutes, we'll see what happens. I'm doing it on Tevin Coleman. Okay. And uh, and on, and so I think he'll be back this week. I do. And even if he's not, I think he's the back for. I mean, how long is it going to be till Mostert and um, Jeff Wilson in return? I mean, that's two, three, four weeks, right? So I think Coleman will have a premier role in the offense beyond this week, even if he doesn't start which heavily influenced my decision to pretty much not invest in Hasty and to invest in Tevin Coleman, which I didn't really have conviction about for the record and why I didn't bring it up on the show yesterday as much it, until late last, yesterday afternoon when Kyle Shanahan came out and said, look, we think we're going to get Tevin Coleman back. Right. And if I've learned something from Kyle Shanahan from all of one week ago, <laughs> it's that he's a loyalist to this running back uh, room. It, you've seen it with his lack of care for Jarek McKinnon to a degree. I mean, as soon as last week happened and they're like, yeah, we, we're probably going to get Jeff Wilson back off of IR. We just did this. Yeah. It, and then it, he's like, okay, Jeff Wilson, you get all the carries. I agree. And it's it's big of you to bring it up on the show. That being said, Jeremy, uh, Al Borland, was asking me for advice from his father last night. And because it wasn't on the show, I really didn't want to give him the advice that Kyle Shanahan did say they're hoping to have Tevin Coleman back because I'm with you on that. I, 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 have, I have moved in that direction because of the expectation that they might have Tevin Coleman back. We'll see. Well, it's of big of me, but I mean, it's not that big of me because I checked all of your <laughs> budgets. Like uh, Al Borland, I checked mm. your budget. Mike, I checked yours. Jason, I checked yours. I'm bidding more than all of you have. Okay, well, okay. there you go. And uh, I will say... It's small of me. <laughs> <laughs> what sucks is last week, uh, heading into the weekend, Tevin Coleman is... I really wanted to add Tevin Coleman. Yeah. And uh, so we have two IR spots in our League of Record. And on my IR spot was Zach Ertz, who got locked because of the Thursday game. So I could not move. Which we just talked about on the show. The I locking. Could, I could not move Austin Hooper into my IR. So I was not able to put Tevin Coleman onto my bench. And it was just another another haymaker thrown from old Zach Ertz. Even from the bench. Even <laughs> from, from the, the IR. He can throw a haymaker. the grave, he is still <laughs> shutting me down. At least you're not bitter. Oh, he's on the waiver wire now. If anyone wants to go pick him up. Pass. All right. I did say we we're going to talk about some news. The Texans are closing their facility due to a player testing positive for COVID-19. 
However, in this one small instance in 2020, COVID-19 has uh, chosen wisely. They are on by, and hopefully nobody else gets infected. They got time to get through this. Christian McCaffrey designated to return from IR. He is practicing. We have the Thursday night preview coming up, and I will ask a very simple question. Based on your current read on Christian McCaffrey, do you expect to see him suiting up for Thursday? No, I do not either. I'm with you guys. I don't think he'll play, but uh, I, I have the chance at about 10% right now. Dalvin Cook will practice today. Mike Zimmer said he assumes he'll be ready, so expect Dalvin Cook to return. And then uh, Doug Peterson says Miles Sanders and Lane Johnson day-to-day. -day. Oh, Miles from Tomorrowland, I need you, buddy. You know what, Mike? You Please. were You were bitter yes. about Miles Sanders showing up as doubtful in one of your leagues, causing you to not be able to move him into out of the, you know, into the IR. Yep. And here you are with with some news that he could play. Oh, this is this is fantastic news. Oh, now you're fine. Yeah. Oh, Miles Sanders is the best. Also, speaking of great news, Alshon Jeffrey's foot is cleared. Oh, that's great. Let's pick him up. Uh, also, bad news: Alshon Jeffrey now has a calf injury. So this dude, don't pick him up. His body is Head just breaking and shoulders, down knees and toes. at a knees cellular toes. level. <laughs> shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and I, I was getting in with it. Yeah, you were. Um, but, yeah. I mean, Je Jeffrey is not somebody that you can really look at for the rest of the year, I don't think. With Rager coming back, with the emergence of Travis Fulgham, nope. All right, a reminder. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. See who your league has dropped. Getting more important each and every week because – People are giving up on players. Players like Zach Ertz just flying into the waiver wire. Yeah, go pick him up. And, He's really uh, good. See who your league mates dropped today. He is he is in my list. Good, pick he's, him up. He's low on my list, I but he's in do. there. I know. Enjoy. I, and and <laughs> I, I literally, the whole time, I'm like, do I really want to get him? No. So I put him like at, at the end, and I'm hoping I don't get him, but he's still on it. And what does that say? It's like, I uh, it, it, it feels like a trap. No, he's no, he's really good. I can't believe I had to drop him. It's, I, I it's mean, terrible. He's Zach Ertz. He's getting targets. I'm, I'm still. I <laughs> he's talking I'm honoring to himself his name right now. by putting him low on my priority list. All right, before we get into one of the best drops of all time and a great midseason review, want to thank today's sponsor, Hello Fresh. Uh, HelloFresh is awesome, especially this year where we've been doing so much cooking at home. HelloFresh makes it easy because you're going to get new meals all the time. There's difference. There's variety. I don't have to go to the grocery store. I don't have to do the shopping. I don't have to measure all the ingredients. Everything is pre-measured. Everything is delicious. It's super great. Uh, I mean, and HelloFresh is a really good company. Uh, their carbon footprint is 25% lower than store-bought grocery meals. You can save 40% by using HelloFresh versus shopping at your local grocery store. They, they just have so many great options, and it doesn't matter. You, you Are you vegetarian? Great. They've got an option. Do you have a family, kid-friendly meals? Great. They've got it for you. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy80 and use the code Fantasy80 to get a total of $80 off across five boxes, including free shipping for your first box. That's HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy80 and code FANTASY80 for a total of $80 off across five boxes, including free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions apply. Please visit HelloFresh.com for more details. And ladies and gentlemen, want to tell you, some of you already are in the know, but some of you don't. Want to tell you about our other podcast, the Spitballers Podcast. If you like the nonsense that happens on this show, if you're just looking for an hour of relief, a, a time you can laugh, a hearty belly laugh ha, 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 ha. about nothing. <laughs> it's usually more realistic than Andy's laugh that he just gave us. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, Humorous. But a, but a comedy show, you can listen by yourself. You can listen with the whole family. They they come out on Monday. It's a really good time. Everyone's looking for a break from life right now in the Spitballers podcast. Every Monday will give you that know hour. We're not, we're not funny enough. I mean, it's not like we're going to win the... <sighs> you know, best comedy show award for podcast awards back to back years. Mike. Of course we would not do that. We, and if we did, we would never bring that up and gloat about it. Never. Not us. It's one of the most humble comedy shows that S you can listen to. Super humble. 
Review Asaurus Rex. All right, uh, we do have that. That's the drop from from the distant past. Review Asaurus Rex is back because we're doing a mid season review. Yeah, when Jason didn't come in with this one comes in from yeah this one comes in from mid season review. Yeah, um, the a, a little alarm went off in my head of saying the show is the show's going wrong. All right, we want to bring you a little mid season review, make some predictions. Uh, let's talk about quarterbacks right now. This is always fun because you know. Looking at it in totality, halfway through the year, here are the top 12 quarterbacks in fantasy points per game with a minimum of five games played in four point per passing touchdown leagues right now. Numero uno, I think we know, mm -hmm. but it's getting tight. Mr. Unlimited. Yes. Uh, wait, don't we have that drop? Yeah, we do. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't see it in there. Get it in there, Al. Unlimited. Oh, thanks, Al. Thanks. Oh, there it is. Unlimited. I feel oh, like gosh, we're not want, allowed. I get to, like my skin crawls. We're not allowed to play that drop only once. No. Unlimited. Number one, Russell Wilson. Number two, Kyler Murray. And it's close. They're getting real close. Uh, Kyler just won his second Offensive Player of the Week award in three weeks. Dak Prescott is number three. Mm, pour one out. Justin Herbert is at four Whew. in points per game. You're darn right he is. Patrick Mahomes at five. Josh Allen at six. Deshaun Watson moving up to seven. Aaron Rodgers at eight. Ryan Tannehill at nine. Tom Brady's at 10. Carson Wentz at 11. And <clears throat> mm. Mr. Limited, Lamar Jackson at 12. Oof. If if you ask someone who's been better for fantasy this year, Carson Wentz or oh, Lamar no. Jackson, oh, oh yikes! I mean, Whew. there was someone on Twitter that asked me yesterday, "Do I trade Lamar Jackson for Tom Brady?" Now, <laughs> the answer could be yes. I mean, Antonio Brown, you you package trade that, but what if you can't? Because just, we want to make the conversation more. Yeah. Uh, right now, if you're coming off of – if you have Tom Brady and he just scored five touchdowns and he gets Antonio Brown and he's looking like, you know, MVP candidate. Right. And then somebody's living with the Lamar Jack. I mean, this is a hard thing psychologically to do. If you have Tom Brady right now, Jason, are you going to go trade him for Lamar Jackson? Because you're saying, look at what Lamar did last year. I want that. Yeah, that that is it's difficult. You're not going to find a fantasy manager who is uh, wanting to get rid of Tom Brady. It's different because a lot of times, sometimes you wait for um, a big game and sell high, and you think, okay, maybe that's what's going to happen with uh, whoever has Tom Brady. But the difference is Antonio Brown. The difference is it, he's on fire right now, and then he's getting the best wide receiver of the last decade. And, and granted, we don't know how that's going to mesh, but that receiving core is outlandish and if Tom Brady from here for the rest of the season averages three touchdowns a game it could happen now Brooks gave us a, a good thing to, to point out here Lamar is coming back from the bye week we always talk about the strategy of buying the extra game Tom Brady's bye week is week 13 that could be uh timed very poorly for your your fantasy needs if you have a win and get in situation in week 13 but part of this review is we are asking ourselves the question, who is someone inside the top 12 that you think will finish outside the top 12? And my answer is Lamar Jackson. Uh, I know, it's, and I'm trying to be measured, and I don't want to like be hot take and pile on to Lamar Jackson. But one, he's, he's not throwing the ball well. He can still run, run like the Dickens. <laughs> but but his, but his deep ball accuracy is trash right now. Maybe the bye week, they get it together, they've rallied, but here's what's happening to Lamar Jackson. Here's the schedule for him. Oh, Pittsburgh, mercy. Pittsburgh, the Colts, the Patriots, the Titans, and then we follow that up again with Pittsburgh. Those are the next five matchups for Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar is supposed to be matchup proof. He is supposed to be, but we already have three stinkers from Lamar Jackson, including a game against the Cincinnati Bengals. So I have my concerns while Tom Brady is – Tom Brady can 
Tom Brady will probably give you some duds, uh, I believe, but he is surging forward with the team, and the team is going to get better. So this is – Lamar Jackson is my – my sheep is I raise my hand and I stick my head out of the bushes and whisper, I think Lamar Jackson might not finish in the top 12. And if you drafted him, you spent a lot of draft capital yeah. to get a known commodity superstar. You look at a lot of these names, and this is why we say in the draft season to not draft your quarterbacks early because Kyler wasn't super early. Justin Herbert, <laughs> I mean, he wasn't drafted early. Josh Allen drafted. was still a little later. Deshaun Watson was falling in drafts. Ryan Tannehill was super late. Nobody wanted Carson Wentz with the injury. So this this is, uh, uh, you know, it's the same as it is every year. Uh, my player who I think is going to fall out of the top 12, while I love what I've seen, he's been on fire the last several weeks. He's the quarterback one. But Justin Herbert is a rookie. I don't believe that he is going to smash all rookie records of all time by the end of this season, even with him missing week one as a starter. And at some point, I think he will come back to earth and fall on a fantasy finish forecast. So I am uh, I am picking Big Herb to drop out of the top 12. And it saddens me. Interesting. Right now, Herbert is averaging... Uh, about 25 fantasy points a game. I was curious where Burrow was. But Burrow's had some rough weeks, which is what you're kind of talking about. Exactly. I believe Burrow is a better quarterback than Justin Herbert in real life. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the, the argument certainly can be made. I think they're both great. and But you make a good point because when I my perception of Burrow because of a couple of explosion games was that he's getting it done every week. And because he's on pace for a record-breaking 4,600 yards – you think, okay, fantasy-wise, he's been good, but before this last week against Cleveland, Burrow was 14th, 29th, 20th, 13th on the week, and uh, I certainly don't believe Herbert will stay at four, but I think he'll stay inside the top 12. I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers as my pick. Hmm. He's sitting at eighth right now in points per game, uh, and I think it's going to be close for Aaron Rodgers. He's certainly a reliable fantasy starter somebody that you can you can throw in there and get the five touchdown week but the the kind of dna of this team is still aaron jones the running game the defense last year rogers wasn't in this category so i i'll have him slip out although mike your point on lamar with him being at 12th right now already and the, that gauntlet i mean pittsburgh twice in five weeks is enough to dissuade you from a player like like i would I was going to say that the Brady week 13 buy doesn't really bother me in general, like with this trade. And that was before I looked at this schedule for Lamar Jackson. So I would trade for Brady. I'd be shopping Lamar for Brady. Oh, man. And that is a compelling argument to make if you are the one with Lamar. Yes, please it's, get a package. It's, it's the old man. I mean, just, yeah, try to get more than Brady. But you might not be able to off of a five-touchdown week. Oh, man. And then is there what a world? Is there, <laughs> Jason's, Jason's trying to I keep just, his opinions to himself. I, I look when you watch Lamar Jackson play this season, he has been flat out, flat out bad at quarterback. He is a phenomenal mobile running option, but when he throws the ball, he has missed too many good reads. I mean, he's making the right read. He's just not hitting the the, the player. But it is a scary proposi proposition yes. to give this piece of advice because w will anybody be surprised if all of a sudden he comes out of the bye, they've worked those things out, good head coach, good team, and they start scorching earth on offense and all of a sudden Lamar Jackson. Well, and he, had, he had the knee injury, so he didn't run a little bit for a couple games. Maybe he gets that going after the bye. You're right. Yeah. but Sur Surprise, no, not at all. And Lamar Jackson, like if we're saying he just finishes as, as a top 12 guy – in, in between here and week uh, you know, 16, Lamar Jackson has the ability to have – he was the number one guy on the week because he ran in two touchdowns and he threw for two, and he spikes his points all the way up to finishing as a top 12 guy. So I'm just – he is not an absolute must-sell for me. I just want to to point out to people what has happened and what – he, what he's looking down coming into the future. And their defense is so good. Yeah. They just don't need him to throw. Uh Although they might against Pittsburgh twice in that situation. Um, Al, did you uh, – I noticed I got Tevin Coleman. 
What'd you pay? Yep. I paid forty six. Wow. Okay. Um, did you have a bid in on Coleman before this discussion there, Al? I did. Okay. And so Al Al had a bid of thirty six. So I don't feel too bad about that. Not bad. Um, but I also just lost Beckham and need a start this week and hoping that's him. All right. Drew Brees is the player I think could sneak into that uh fancy points per game. Great offense. Michael Thomas coming back. Uh, so that's my call there. Jason, who do you think can get into that top 12 in points per game at the quarterback position? Um, at the quarter, it's Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan has been unbelievably good in all the games that he's had Julio Jones. He missed Julio Jones for a couple games. So if Julio's there for the rest of the season, I think Matt Ryan will be a great start rest of season. Yeah, I'm with Jason, Matt Ryan. Okay. All right. Running backs. Top 12 right now in fantasy points per game with minimum five games played and half PPR. Alvin Kamara is number one. Dalvin Cook's at two. Aaron Jones at three. Derrick Henry at four. First surprise here, number five. James Robinson ahead oh, of man. ahead of Ezekiel Elliott at six. Chris Carson at seven. Kareem Hunt at eight. Gurley's at nine. Miles Sanders at ten. Joe Mixon at eleven. Josh Jacobs at twelve. And uh, those first three names: Kamara, Cook, Jones. In games that they've played. No duds whatsoever. You did have one dud game for Derrick Henry, but he's been outstanding since then. Uh, week one and two, kind of a slow start, but he's been great. James Robinson, a couple mediocre games, but, I mean, you're probably flexing James Robinson. So uh, let's have that same question, though. Inside the top 12 that you think will be out by season's end. So when I looked at this, I, I just, you know, the reality is, there's going to be a couple of these guys who are out by season end, and it's going to be because of injury, right? Not just because they're not good enough or their offense changes or their defense changes. And my big concern with uh, here is, is Miles Sanders. Uh, hey, day to day sounds great. Maybe he will be back this week. Maybe he won't, but will he stay healthy? Will he continue to be on the field because so far this is his first time where it's like you know coming in the in the offseason I was all about the hype that he was one of the rare true three down backs he was a true workhorse which is an absolute must for fantasy football I loved him I have him in about half of my leagues I've got Miles Sanders and I'm thrilled when he's out there on the field I love it but I just worry whether his body can take that or not because we didn't see him get a full 300 carry or touch workload in his rookie year and then continue on. This was the first time that they're saying, you're our guy, we're going to put the weight of the team on your shoulders, and so far he's had a couple of injuries now, so I just worry whether he could stay on the field. He's great when he's on it. Yeah, I went with Todd Gurley, the touchdown-dependent Todd Gurley. Older back, more tread on the tires. He's only sitting at nine in terms of fantasy points per game. So over yeah, the back... He probably won't finish in the top 12. I don't think so. I, it doesn't feel like he will. But he, at the same time, you look at the last four weeks, and he's got three top 12 finishes, two number three finishes. Yeah, and his workload is actually going up. He tried real hard not to finish in the top 12 last week. He just... Yeah, I mean, it, to, to I mean, Jason's point about uh, he, Jason has never been a supporter of Brian Hill and Ito Smith. In fact, he has very uh, been the opposite. Yeah, they suck. <laughs> yeah, well, and the team kept forcing those guys on the field, and it seems like they are transitioning away from that. Yeah, I mean, and going more to Gord, <laughs> look, more to Gurley. Spoiler alert: He's my start of the week again this week. Uh, so. Gurley could continue on this year and, and be great, but it does feel like because it's what well, Andy's saying, so much touchdown dependency in his fantasy points right now. If those don't come, he's not a top 12 guy. So are you with Gurley on that too, Mike? Uh, I think Gurley might hold up uh, I because of the scoring. because the, Touchdowns are hard to predict, but I believe in Matt Ryan and I believe in the Falcons offense and their ability to score a bunch of points. That's just going to turn into more – Todd Gurley opportunities uh, as much as I've been anti Todd Gurley for fantasy this year for me it's uh, I, I'm trying not it's like I'm picking at the uh, the uh, the phrase here the the guys who are just on the bottom but like Joe Mixon and Josh Jacobs have both shown just 
like I mean, they're fifty percent of the time, you know, that these guys are good. Joe Mixon has been trending in the right direction, but foot sprain. How long is Joe Mixon actually going to be out? He might miss this week. We 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 don't have the information yet. And Josh Jacobs and the Raiders, man, there's they're putting Richard on the field. They're putting Devontae Booker on the field. So those would be the guys that I'd be looking at that won't make it into the top twelve. I have an um, I have an announcement to make. You do. I just while you were talking, I went through our our waivers, mm -hmm. looking, see, you know, oh, oh. Did, I, <laughs> did I get this guy? Did I get that guy? Oh no, you, do you? He's in. You stepped in my booby trap. <laughs> <laughs> I have Zach Ertz now on my roster. Ah, oh, it doesn't feel good. I mean, I. Yeah. No, no, this isn't good music. Jason, he's so good, man. Ah, I, uh, so hold we, on, hold on. We have two IR spots, and my hope is that if Christian McCaffrey comes off, I can just sneak Zach Ertz onto the IR and then add an additional. So you are rolling Zach Ertz on active bench. Well, I might, <laughs> I might have to just drop. look. <laughs> What'd you pay? A dollar. I thought I wouldn't get him. Too much. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's fine. I, 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 as if you didn't have control over whether you signed Zach Ertz. That's my favorite part of this. Yeah. it. it this I was a willful decision. I went against my own self. All right. A running back outside the top 12 that could end up a second half star, end up in that top 12 in points per game. Jason and I have shared opinions on this. Yeah. We've we've been waiting for this. I've, I've talked about it from the very get-go that I think it's going to be a second half of the season outpouring for Jonathan Taylor. Thomas, he's coming off of his bye. We're going to start entering the games that you have to win to get into the playoffs where they can't just rest him. And I think the offense and the offensive line is going to continue to mesh, get it together. Their tight ends are going to get healthy, which will help the run game. Jonathan Taylor is a great trade for target. Now, there, it's within the realm of uh, you know possibility that he's just because I would say most people are disappointed with how he's been so far. He has not been bad. He hasn't been hurting your fantasy team. He's been getting workload, but he hasn't had any explosive games. He's not winning weeks for you, and that could just be who he is. But I think they get it together. I think touchdowns come more frequently, and the second half of the season, a, a player that climbs into the top twelve by seasons end will be JTT. I agree. I agree. I think he's got a great opportunity. I mean, he's been solid. He's, he passed his, he'll be past his bye week now in 13.1 fantasy points per game. He's ju You just have one dud, but you're right, Jason. That He hasn't hit, he, he hasn't broke through the glass ceiling yet of like, oh, superstar Jonathan Taylor is here. Uh, I have two guys that I want to highlight. One, uh, Daryl Henderson from the Los Angeles Rams, and this is this is a sketchy <laughs> proposition here because of what the Rams have been doing with their running backs, but he is the best running back on this team. Cam Akers seems to be uh, pulling a homer into the bush, just just walking right back despite his draft capital. Uh, that it's sketchy because Cam Akers could emerge at some point, <laughs> but but I think that Daryl Henderson is going to be their guy that they roll with through the rest of the season, and the other player. It's Chase Edmonds from the Arizona Cardinals, uh, the the number one waiver pickup of this week. I think Kenyon Drake is going to miss several weeks. I think Chase Edmonds is the better player, and this is the opportunity where, uh, I mean, Kenyon Drake did this to David Johnson last year. David Johnson got hurt. Kenyon Drake was the much better player. Kenyon Drake took David Johnson's lunch money, and – that lunch money that Drake stole, I think Edmonds is about to snatch and th it. And that absolutely could happen where Drake does not get his role back. That can happen. But it is worth noting that the Arizona Cardinals placed two players on IR yesterday. They did not place Kenyon Drake on IR. So if you're talking about timeline-wise, IR would mean you're going to guarantee miss three games. Mm -hmm. That is not It'll be interesting, though, because they're on by, right? Yes. Yes. So you wonder if... Uh... Yeah, oh, you know, not practicing this week is it a necessity? The guys they placed on IR were definitive done injuries. One uh, of them was, yeah. One was an ankle injury that they're that they're basically calling the three week timeline. All right, wide receivers, fantasy points per game leaders at the midway point. Tyler Lockett's number one, Calvin Ridley at two, Adam Thielen 
at three. DeAndre Hopkins at four. DK Metcalf at five. Stephon Diggs at six. Justin Jefferson at seven. Tyree Kill at eight. Julio Jones at nine. Amari Cooper at 10. Will Fuller, the Flying V, at 11. And Chase Claypool at 12. Uh, Keenan Allen, Robbie Anderson are 0.1 points per game behind Claypool, so basically tied for 12th. Uh, and Devontae Adams would be number one, but he's only got four games played. We did it by five games played. So obviously I, he is he's in I'm going ineligible. To pick, <laughs> I'm going to pick Devontae Adams will finish as a quarterback one. Uh, quarterback lock, it, one. lock it in oh. the snapshot tool is comedic because, you know, he's got two number one finishes on the week, bookending a 72nd and 53rd finish. It looks like Christmas. And, it, you know, it was like 72nd against Miami, 53rd against Minnesota, games you thought he would smash. But that is, uh, you know, that's just part of fantasy football. And you have a choice to make. You can accept the realities of fantasy football and not be emotionally destroyed. Or you can choose to pretend they don't exist, expect every player to be number one every single week, and just be mad all the time. Yeah. Those are your two possible outcomes. <laughs> one of those sounds better. I mean, if you think about DeAndre Hopkins and Tyler Lockett, right? Tyler Lockett's he, these huge games and a couple of bust games. But it's not, it's not, that's not really true. You know, you look at like DeAndre Hopkins has two weeks outside of the top 36. Now, he didn't finish 53rd, but like his good week at 39 uh, two weeks ago, where he was the wide receiver 39, he had 8.3 fantasy points. Compare that to Tyler Lockett the week prior having 6.4. Okay, so you got two fewer points on a bad game. All wide receivers have bad games. They all do, with the sole exception of. Yesteryear, Antonio Brown. Otherwise, and I'm sure Jerry Rice. Back and last year, last year, Michael Thomas. Yeah, that's that's like three examples over 30 years. Now, the the irony is that when you look at the snapshot tool, you get a visualization of consistency. And the most consistent player on a week to week basis right now is Tyreek Hill, in terms of not having at least multiple outside the top 30 type of games, which is funny. I mean, it's just. Not necessarily how you looked at him, not necessarily how you looked at Amari Cooper. Uh, but let's talk about that same question. Someone inside the top 12 you think will be out by season's end. Uh, for me, it's it's pretty obvious. It feels unfair, but it's Chase Claypool. I mean, Claypool is sitting at the very edge, and uh, this was an opportunity situation mm -hmm. for Chase Claypool. I'm sure he will have some more big games. I'm sure he will have more games like last week where he's irrelevant. Yeah, certainly. Um, for me, uh, another somewhat cheaty thing, but it's it's definitely going to be Amari Cooper. Um, Amari Cooper with Andy Dalton was going to be okay. Uh, I, I talked about that 75%, and, and I don't think that we're going to be missing Andy Dalton the rest of the way, but if he ends up missing a couple of weeks, you've got a third string coming in who you have no idea who the – number one target is going to be, and and if he can even get the ball to him, the offense as a whole is going to take a major downturn, and I, you know, Amari Cooper is still going to be the guy who's getting the best defensive cornerback on him, so when you go down to these wide receiver, or these quarterbacks that are uh, down on the depth chart, I, I don't think Amari Cooper is going to be able to hold in the top 12. I, I agree with you completely, by the way. That was that was my first answer until I saw you put it in there. Mike? Yeah, I like both of the choices that you guys have brought up. I'm going to highlight Justin Jefferson, not because he is bad. He is great. He is a good player, and Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. But he is really all or nothing. You have his number one finish, his number two finish. Other than that, outside of the top 30. So it, it he's the guy that I can see slipping outside of the top 12. Not That, he's, that I mean, one he's feels a, a little unfair. Why is that? Because week one and two, he didn't have snap counts, and they didn't. He's a rookie; he wasn't in the offense. You could say you the same for Chase Claypool. Sure, that, but that, you didn't say it, so <laughs> I'm I'm saying it. So I'm not I'm not disagreeing with Justin you. Justin Jefferson was my first answer to this. Um, I didn't want to, you know, the 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 rookie narrative that was used for Justin Herbert. I didn't want to double that up, mm. but the the reality is, this is a team that uh, I, I want to say this is a team that uh, doesn't want to throw the ball that much, but they are. They have to. Yeah, the, they their defense choice. is not good. Yeah, 
I, I think because Jefferson's role is more secure than Claypool, I would have a better bet on Jefferson. Oh, than Claypool. certainly. But I mean, just share, just share my opinion. Sure. Uh, someone outside the top twelve that you think will be a second half star? It's Kenny Galladay for me. Uh, he's been great since coming back, and he was a top five, not just in projections heading into the year, but in results from last season. So the fact that he is sitting here outside, uh, probably by only uh, the qualifier, I think Kenny. G. Oh, so he shouldn't count. You took Devonte Adams. <laughs> <laughs> is, is 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 Kenny Galladay already in? Um, the guy that I absolutely love and I think is going to be great, he has been great, and he's got a better quarterback situation here is uh, Terry McLaurin. I mean, Terry's awesome. You watch these games. You, you look at him in the locker room. Uh, he is the centerpiece of this team now in only his second year. Um, and, and now with Dwayne Haskins not, at quarterback, I think sky's the limit for Terry McLaurin. And uh, he's he's just outside of the top 12, like Andy highlighted. But Keenan Allen, I want to highlight him because I think Keenan Allen is a player you should try to get right now. I I get it. You're, you're paying up for Keenan Allen because you're not. there's no dip to be had here. But Keenan Allen with Justin uh, Herbert through the rest of the season. I, I think that Keenan Allen is... It sounded like an actual burp. Like, <laughs> Herbert. 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 Uh, I think Keenan Allen Justin is... a Ribbit. I, I believe that Keenan Allen, by the end, is going to be a league-winning type of wide receiver. It's certainly possible. Um, I love what I see from their willingness to just entrust the rookie to throw the ball. And he's smart because he throws it to Keenan Allen. Yes. And then he looks like a genius. Who would you rather have, Keenan Allen or Terry McLaurin? Keenan, Keenan Allen. Allen. It's close for me. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I didn't agree with any of your contentions about his quarterback. <laughs> I, I agreed with all of your contentions about McLaurin's skills and abilities, but those have been present since middle of last year, and I don't think Kyle Allen's a great quarterback. Well, yeah, I mean, it wasn't that he's got Kyle Allen. It was that he doesn't have Dwayne Haskins. So it was an upgrade so Up, far. Yeah, addition by subtraction, I think that is what they call it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, tight ends. George Kittle at one in points per game. That's true, Brooks? Yeah. Number one in Barely. points per well, game? I mean, that number one, the number one he had in week four was ridiculous. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's when it's, it's a little bit uh, a little bit interesting. He has two finishes inside the top 15 on the year. Both were in the top two. Yeah, but they were one and two. Uh, so, Kittle at one, Kelsey two, Waller three, Mark Andrews four, Johnny Smith is five, TJ Hawkinson is six. That's nice to see. Mm -hmm. Robert uh, Tunyon at seven, Noah Fant at eight, Jared Cook at nine, Jimmy Grandpa at 10, Hayden Hurst at 11, Tyler Higby at 12. Showing you just how competitive the tight end position is. <laughs> Yeah, it's a yikes. I mean, there is there is one week that you would have been happy with Tyler Higby, and Correct. he's still in the top 12. Uh, someone inside the top 12 you think will be out by season's end? I mean, it's it's, it's Higby. It's Tyler Higby. It's Tyler Higby, yeah. and it's uh, it's the guy Jason is going to bring up. Uh, yeah, for, for me, uh, yeah, outside of Higby, it's uh, Robert Tunyon because he had, he had one of those Chase Claypool-type – took advantage of a wide receiver being gone and targets being necessary had he he did have two weeks where he did it but this is not an offense that's historically used the tight end all that much and I think by the end of the year he'll have another couple touchdown games but I, I think he will fall out of the top 12. Well the, the hard part with him was right before he had the breakout game I said not to play him because Rodgers can throw it to Lewis and he can throw it to uh, Sternberger and then he just threw it to Tunyon. And then you saw last week and the week before, he is spreading it around a little bit. So uh, an outside the top 12 that you think will end up inside the top 12. Oh, I'll let you take this one, Andy. It's Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. Yep. He's yep. looked great. The targets, uh, the results, it's all there for Rob Gronkowski. And, you know, this is a player that hadn't been on the field for a while. Now he's acclimated opportunity with O.J. Howard out which um, Stephen A. Smith wasn't aware of 
on yesterday. Oh, no. Saw, Come on. I saw, he sounds was go- about right, he was, go- he was going on this big rant about how the Tampa Bay is going to make the Super Bowl and Antonio Brown and how great he is and Tom Brady is going to win the MVP. And, and he's like, you know, just going through all the players. It's like, you know, and he's got, you know, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And is O.J. Howard out? I don't I don't think he is. And, and then blah, blah, blah. Didn't he do the same thing with Hunter Henry? Yeah, depth charts are not a strength. Steven, Steven, shame on you. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, but uh, Gronkowski has, has such a great opportunity. And uh, I, so I'll just throw in the, the tidbit here of for both Gronk and A.J. Green. We had a great ceremony for A.J. Green. We retired him. We had moved on. Both Green and Gronk were elite players. Who missed a lot of time over More than a, a year? Season, yeah, and it's maybe it just the it was the old lawnmower wouldn't start in those first few <laughs> weeks. <laughs> I like that, but they finally got it going, and so we'll we'll have to remember that for for the next time this happens. That once once week four or week five comes around, still give the the appropriate advice, but maybe don't. Don't retire oh, them. I, Have you seen I, the yeah, targets I, for AJ Green the last two weeks? I yes. didn't even see them. No, they are insane. Have you seen them? Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I am aware that he, he, his role changed. He moved inside eleven and, the, and thirteen. Yeah, he's 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 being an inside uh, target hog. And the same thing happened for Gronk, where OJ Howard went down. I don't think it's just the age, and they were gone for a while. Both of their situations changed, where their targets. You know Gronk's targets in the beginning of the year were right. there. Yeah, it wasn't was like, it, yeah, it wasn't like he was you know not not healthy enough or something. And 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 AJ Green had targets at the beginning of the year and he was missing them until they moved him inside. I I did see a tweet from a good friend of the show JJ Zacharyson talking about um, AJ Green's efficiency on those targets being super bad, even on a weekly ba- every single week, including the last couple of weeks on uh, expectation for the the targets that he's getting. So I'm curious, but the role is there for him. I do kind of worry about Gronk in the sense that, okay, O.J. Howard went out, and they obviously have been missing back and forth uh, a little bit of Godwin. Mm-hmm. Does, does Antonio Brown coming in and now having the three-headed wide receiver core that's great, will that then take Ooh, some of those yep. targets that Gronk has been uh, needed for away? It certainly will, because Antonio Brown will get targets. And there's only so many to go around, but but the end zone, you know, yeah. Scotty Miller will give his up, yeah, at yeah, a moment's that's, notice. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it'll it could fluctuate. I like seeing where you know around the end zone what they're what they're doing. It, Dallas Goddard could have a nice. Yes, Dallas Goddard was gonna I was gonna highlight both Dallas Goddard Goddard and Jalen Rager have been activated off of the IR from the Philadelphia Eagles, which means they are in their practice window. That doesn't mean they're coming back this week. It doesn't mean they're coming back next week or even the week after they have that. 21 days. Exactly. They have 21 days of practice before the team has to make a decision to shut them down or bring them back. So, it, But once Goddard is back, and he is going to come back, I think Dallas Goddard is going to be fantastic. Yeah, he definitely could. And Peterson said that Rager is going to practice today, and then they'll see where he's at. <laughs> Thursday night breakdown. All right, the Atlanta Falcons at one and six take on the Carolina Panthers at three and four. Uh, reminder: take Thursday night players out of the flex. Mike, you said something at the very, very beginning of the show. Mm, that, I've already forgotten that I'm going to bring up right now. I need and I nap. don't know if you were prescribing it, but you mentioned, yeah, you need a nap, yes. and I'd like you to take it. Thank you. Um, goodbye. No, it was about Teddy Bridgewater. Mm. Uh, he's your stream of the week this week. He's obviously in this uh, in this matchup at home. Atlanta is on pace to allow 5,500 yards, 55! Uh, which is the record. It would be the record given up um, in terms of, uh, I guess they were comparing that to like Peyton Manning's record-setting yardage season. Atlanta would like to break that. But Teddy Bridgewater, Jason was talking about Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. And talking about him being a potential top 10 guy, is he a top 10 guy this week against New England? Were you implying, in fact, that you would play Teddy Bridgewater over Josh Allen this week? That is correct. Okay. That is correct. What is your reaction to that, Jason? Um, 
I'm a little bit surprised. I I completely get that on a on a weekly basis he could very well outscore Josh Allen, but the rushing baseline um and and I, what I per- see as the perceived ceiling um says that I would stick with Josh Allen because of his range of outcomes having a little bit more juice in it. That being said, um you know, this is a great matchup against Atlanta. And what we we've already seen these two play each other once this year, right? And Teddy Bridgewater had 313 yards of two touchdowns, which is great. And that was without Atlanta having Julio Jones. So the, Atlanta only scored 16 points. Now, if Atlanta could keep up, maybe Teddy just keeps on going. He didn't have he had a very good game, but they didn't need to score a lot, right? It's going to be very interesting. I was talking to Mike in the studio yesterday. What has seemed like a great matchup for back-to-back weeks in Atlanta has not translated to superior fantasy numbers for both Kirk Cousins and Matthew Stafford, who we brought up repeatedly because all Atlanta does is give up a ton of yardage, including last week to Matthew Stafford, 340 yards, the late-game heroics. Atlanta has been better since they got rid of Dan Quinn. They've, they've given up fewer points. Um, Teddy Bridgewater, ironically, seem, feels a lot like DJ Moore at the quarterback position, where I think he needs a big play. He needs one big play against Atlanta, which Atlanta is like, sure, that's cool. So I do think that that's a uh, it's a viable start. But I feel like with the divisional game, I'm I'm a little less bullish on Bridgewater giving you a top ten type of week this week. That's just my take on it. Um, Matt Ryan should have a healthy Julio. I that's, think so. There's so many question marks at the end of that. I mean, that's usually what we say every week for the last three years. Yeah, it's a sliding scale with Julio Jones. And and the one thing we've seen with Julio is, you know, he, he even mid game he'll leave and come back on the field. When he's when he's out there, he's good. So I'm not I'm not worried about Julio. Uh, I think he'll be out here, and that means that the Falcons will be able to keep pace with the Carolina Panthers, who have really been a surprising team to me. They're they're I thought they were going to be you know, a, a really, really bad NFL team challenging for a top five NFL draft pick. And, uh, and that next year, cause they set themselves up to be really good for 2021. And they've, they've really surprised me. I mean, these t- head coach over there is murdering. Oh, oh, what's wild about the Panthers is you can run on them. Had, we knew that last year. We've known that this year, but, but the other positions, like they're pretty stingy for fantasy points over the 2020 season, fifth against quarterbacks, third against wide receivers, and tenth against tight ends. I, that's not going to persuade me against playing Matt Ryan or Julio Jones tomorrow night, but it's it's something to be mindful of and paying attention that the Panthers, it's not a plus matchup. But you're, you're not streaming your quarterback targeting the Carolina Panthers, which is wild. Uh, on the Atlanta side, you are starting, I think, all of the knowns. Todd Gurley, great matchup. Oh, yes. Julio and Calvin, yes. And then Hayden Hurst. Honestly, Hayden's been pretty nice the last couple of weeks in terms of, you know, he's not going to zero you out. He seems to be involved. He had a couple of targets this last week that could have gone for touchdowns. Hayden Hurst needs Julio Jones. I agree. And, and, and it's again, it's a new offense for him. Acclamation. The connection with Matt Ryan. Short I think you can play him. Yeah, short off season. We underestimate that a little bit. I'm curious on the running back side for Carolina. If Christian McCaffrey was declared active, I know that nobody's going to sit an active Christian McCaffrey. Correct. Are you willing to flex Mike Davis on Thursday night because of you know the matchup? Because we don't you, flex on Thursday night, Andy. That's a good we point. We take that player out of our flex. Perceptive flex. Perceptive flex and put him in the running back or wide receiver spot, giving you flexibility as the week goes on. But you're right. He That is where he slots in is as a flex player in this matchup. He had a, you know, a fall from grace you know, this last week, and then the, the matchup is it, – now, I, And it's really the last couple of weeks. I know two weeks ago against Chicago, towards the end of the game, he turned around the fantasy day. Uh, but the gummy bear juice is wearing off for Mike Davis. The past two weeks, uh, 21 – or I'm sorry, 18 carries for 52 yards. That's under three yards a carry against the Saints. Seven attempts for 12 yards. Is that gummy bear juice? Is that what Boston Scott was on at the end of last year? Oh, yeah. You, you, 
Hum, hum, like when humans drink gummy bear juice, they get real strong. Right. Gummy bears bounce. <laughs> <laughs> I this is important. No, um, I'm just I mean this you were the PBS kid. That's as, right. As Disney Channel kid, yeah. I'm just sharing my gummy bear knowledge with you. No, I was learning math. They're bouncing here and there and everywhere. All right, DJ Moore, you can play him. Robbie Anderson for sure. Uh and that's that's that for Carolina. So it should be a fun one. I had this moment where I thought I was going to get another Thursday night NFC East game, but uh, oh, we're it's, not. It's not Thursday, but it is definitely still prime time. Are you guys aware that uh, Sunday and Monday we get three of the four? We get what? We get three of the four NFC East teams. Oh, oh do we? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's that's <laughs> great. Yeah, and then, and then um, I do have one bit of news. Oh. And this is, you know, you, when you guys think of Doug Marone, describe Doug Marone in a word or two. Uh, these are fun exercises. Oh, okay, give me give me a word for Doug Marone, head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm, bland. All right, perfect. Old Thank school. you, Mike. Old school, bland. Old school. Listen to this. He says he plans to make changes coming out of the week eight bye. Uh oh. But I got to read the quote, guys. All right. I'm gonna look at some things, says Doug. I want to go a little outside the box. Ooh. I'm gonna go after it and however it falls it falls but it, it's open for me I've done crazy stuff before <laughs> what oh man I've done crazy stuff before he's done crazy stuff oh yeah because you described him with your one word is crazy wild insane right so like when he was in the supermarket looking at the Cheetos and then his eyes caught the flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> You're darn he right. Like, he's like, oh, Marone, however living on it, the wild side today. However it falls, it falls. Look, I, if, I, if, if this translates into like analytically, they're like, screw it. We're going on every fourth down. We're not punting anymore. I think this might translate to run, run, run for the hills, Gardner Minshew, fantasy manager. I don't know. That'll be interesting. I feel like Jack Del Rio did that, though. I feel like at once upon a time, he was a- uh, About blackjack. Yeah, and then he yeah, turned I mean, into he, blackjack Del Rio. I feel like in the beginning he was this old school curmudgeonly, and then he was like, let's just take this belt off and go nuts. I think, yeah. I, <laughs> if you can get rid of Gardner in a dynasty league for anything right now, do it. He's never starting another game if he gets pulled this season for uh, any for we'll any s- team we'll short see. of injury. Um, by the way, uh, if you didn't notice, Doug Marone is, in fact, Adam Lefko. All yeah. right, <laughs> that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for your support. And uh, we'll be back. Big show tomorrow. Matchup starts of the week. See you then. Goodbye. We'll get crazy. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.